Hello, friends, and welcome to Storytime. Today, we're going to be reading the book, A Computer Called Catherine, How Catherine Johnson Helped Put America on the Moon. This book is written by Suzanne Slade and illustrated by Veronica Miller Jameson. So this is the front cover. This is the back cover. And this is the spine. And the back cover says, Catherine knew that women could be anything, so she set out to prove it. And the spine says, a computer called Catherine. Okay, friends, let's get started. A computer called Catherine. This is the title page. Everywhere she went, Catherine counted. She counted her steps to church. One, two, three. She counted the plates on the dinner table. Four, five, six. She even tried counting the stars in the sky. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Most important of all, Catherine counted the days until she could start school. Finally, at age five, she followed her brother hundreds of steps to the two-room schoolhouse. An excellent student, Catherine devoured thick books and added numbers at the speed of light. So the teacher decided she would skip first grade and start in second. But Catherine was such a fast learner, she later skipped fifth grade too. And before you could say mathematician magician, she was a grade ahead of her older brother. Catherine loved math because it was easy to see if an answer was right or wrong. Meanwhile, most everyone in town was arguing about right and wrong. Some people said it was wrong for children with different skin colors to attend the same school. Others said it wasn't right for women to work at the same job as men. Their arguments seemed wrong to Catherine, as wrong as five plus five equals 12. She believed everyone should be treated the same. So she kept working hard in school and she dreamed of a future when all people would have equal rights. Catherine finished eighth grade when she was only 10 years old, but her town didn't have a high school for black students. Determined to keep learning, she counted the dusty miles, 120 in all, as her family moved closer to a school she could attend. There, she took an exciting math class called geometry. She learned how points and lines made shapes, triangles, trapezoids, and perfect parallelograms. So these are triangles, and this looks like an oval, and a cylinder, and a parallelogram. Her love for math grew exponentially. At 15, Catherine started college. She flew through every math class at West Virginia State. So a professor taught harder classes just for her and advanced geometry. She plotted points on a graph. When she connected the dots, they created a beautiful U-shaped curve called a parabola. It was love at first sight. After graduation, Catherine began to be a math teacher. Back then, people said women could only be teachers or nurses. Catherine knew that was wrong, as wrong as 10 minus 5 equals 3. She believed women could be anything, scientists, lawyers, or mathematicians. So she set out to prove it. Catherine discovered a research center in Virginia that was hiring women mathematicians. They were called computers because they made calculations that helped the men engineers design airplanes and flight plans. 
This is called Langley Aeronautical Laboratory. To Catherine, it added up to the perfect job. All day long, she punched buttons on a calculator, just like the other women. She solved long math equations, just like the other women. And she wrote answers on a huge data sheet, just like the other women. But Catherine wasn't like the other women. She asked questions, lots of questions. What were her calculations used for? Why were they important? How did her answers help design airplanes and flights? The men engineers noticed the woman who asked intelligent questions and how quickly she solved difficult math problems. So they asked Catherine to join their space team. Its mission was to send America's first astronaut into space. Catherine said yes. Then she discovered that women weren't allowed to attend the group's meetings. She knew this was wrong, as wrong as five times five equals 20, because actually five times five is 25. So she asked if she could go. Women don't ever go to those, the engineers replied. Is there a law against it? Catherine asked. No. So Catherine showed up to the meeting, ready to work. Astounded by her geometry skills, the team asked her to calculate when America's first space flight should blast off. Catherine agreed, but first she asked questions like, where should the rocket splash down? How high should it fly? When should it land? With that information, Catherine carefully computed the rocket's flight path, a beautiful U-shaped curve. Next, she worked backward to figure out the time it should blast off. Then she began counting the days until the launch. On May 5th, 1961, Alan Shepard blasted off. Following Catherine's flight path, he soared into the silvery sky. And 15 minutes later, he splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean, right on schedule and right on target. Soon, Americans began dreaming of a longer flight around the entire Earth. To figure out the math for this long, complicated trip, Engineers decided to use their new room-sized computer that worked much faster than people. But astronaut John Glenn trusted Catherine more than a machine. He wouldn't step one foot onto the rocket until she said the computer's calculations were correct. Happy to help, Catherine checked every number. On February 20th, 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit Earth. Then people began wondering if an astronaut could travel all the way to the moon. Both the Soviet Union and the United States wanted to be the first to land there and win the space race. Catherine knew this flight was incredibly long and dangerous. Every calculation would have to be perfect. One math mistake and the rocket would zoom right past the moon. As NASA's computer hummed and computed a flight path to the moon and back, Catherine went to work too, double checking the machine's calculations. But this was the most complicated geometry problem she'd ever seen. One of the points, the spacecraft was flying incredibly fast. Here it's 2,040 miles per hour. And her target, the moon, was constantly circling Earth while spinning. Okay, so it's spinning at 10.3 miles per hour. 
And it, then it's also going around Earth. It's orbiting Earth. Some people thought the problem was too difficult to solve. But Catherine knew that was wrong. As wrong as 25 divided by 5 equals 4. Because actually, 25 divided by 5 is 5. She calculated and computed. She plotted and planned. She created a bold, brave path all the way to the moon and back. Ten, nine, ignition sequence starts. Heart racing. Catherine leaned close to the small television screen. Seven, six, five. She held her breath as powerful flames exploded on the launch pad. Four, three, two, one, lift off. The rumbling rocket slowly rose above the ground, above the smoke, above the clouds, and then disappeared into ink black space. Four days later, as Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the moon, Catherine smiled and began to count. And so here are some real pictures. This is the proposed flight path for Alan Shepard's first American spacecraft, space flight. And this is Catherine Johnson right here at her desk. And this is a report that she co-authored. And this is Apollo's proposed flight path to land on the moon and return to Earth. She said, girls are capable of doing everything men are capable of doing. And here it says, if you wanna know, ask a question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Here's the rocket. And here is a picture of Suzanne Slade. She's the author. And this is Veronica Miller Jameson. She's the illustrator. The end. So this book was called A Computer Called Catherine. Thanks for coming to Storytime, friends. And I'll see you next time.